Welcome to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Jenna McEwen. And I'm Mikey Metcalf. And this week we are in beautiful northern Saskatchewan. We just got off the plane and we're heading to Camp Grayling, our home for the next week. We're on the hunt for massive northern pike. And if we get the chance, we're going to get out the small rods and we're going to throw dries for the elusive Arctic Grayling. It's going to be epic. Stay tuned. Oh, this guy came out of nowhere. Ooh, that's a nice sized fish. What? <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Tourism Saskatchewan, Orvis Fly Fishing. Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada, In this episode, Mikey and I are the guests of Trevor Montgomery owner and operator of Camp Grayling. Trevor's passion for angling and knowledge of the region is evident to anyone who meets him and will certainly be of benefit as Mikey and I fish for monster northern pike and arctic grayling. We also have the pleasure of fishing with Camp Grayling guide JB as well as guest and friend Ron Bonneau. Summertime in Canada's far north can often bring a wide range of weather. But this year is very different. Like parts of the Western USA and Canada, this summer, Northern Saskatchewan is experiencing record high temperatures and even a drought. As a result, there are several forest fires burning in our region with smoke traveling long distances. Despite the smoky conditions, Trevor felt confident that our trip would be both safe and successful. Not only does Camp Grayling have access to a variety of rivers and lakes near the small northern town of Stony Rapids, but they also offer guests the opportunity to explore their outposts and fly-ins. On this trip, we were lucky to have the opportunity to spend the first few days of our adventure at the Rio Lake Outpost, located a few hours drive from Stony Rapids. Rio Lake Outpost was something I'd never experienced before, with a full outdoor kitchen, running water, and comfortable platform tents. It's true luxury camping right in the middle of the wilderness. After a long day of travel, we settled in for the night, eager for our first day of fishing in the morning. It's day one here at the Rio Lake Outpost, and Trevor suggested that Mikey and I head out in separate boats to cover more water and locate fish. Today we decided to come down the lake and uh, fish one of our favorite spots called Moose Bay here. Uh, it's one of our bigger pike spots and we're gonna come down here and try it out a little bit. Uh, of course, we're fly fishing today, so we're using an assortment of flies, including, uh, uh, you know, Northern Magic and a couple different patterns. We got a bit of an overcast day. Uh, the sun should pop out a couple of times here over the course of the day and nice shallow water, so we'll be able to do some sight fishing, hopefully, in that and we'll, uh, we'll have a lot of fun. Is, it, is there like a saddle in the middle? Well, it would be, so this is coming through here. 
right? And yeah. it's just running back into that bog. It's not a river or a creek or anything, though. This okay. is just a bait. Oh, right? Okay. Just the wind blowing in, blowing the bait fish up into the reeds, and that's what you're... That's what we're looking for because those fish should be sitting up in there. Uh, the saddle more so is going to be out here once we go around that island where we drove through. It's kind of shallow and sandy and there's quite a number of big fish in there okay. too as well. So we're going to try and hit the bay first and then we'll probably work our way out there and start uh, casting some of that flat in the edges of the saddle and see what we can find out there too as well. Sounds good. Oh, there it up. we go. That's, there a, go. that's a nice fish. Ah. <laughs> that's a very nice fish. Ooh. So, uh, we found a cabbage bed that's a little deeper. We can't see the, the tips of the cabbage, but I thought I had got caught on a weed. I was kind of slowing my retrieve down a little bit. So I kind of, I popped my fly up and I thought I'd just gotten it unhooked from the weeds, but then right beside the boat, right beside the boat, you see that big back come up. Oh yeah, this is a nice, nice fish. And when they go under like that, put your rod tip in the water, go under the boat, your rod tip, it's better to just dip it down into the water. They're flexible. Um, don't wanna, okay, I'm gonna try and get this guy on the reel. Good fight, holy smokes. Oh man, my blood is pumping. <laughs> nice, Ooh, not quite ready. I think it's, it's the cold water up here that, that helps them get so strong. Yeah, cold water and it's probably a, a fresh fish. It hasn't been caught for a long, long time, I imagine, right? So they always seem to fight a little harder too as oh, well. Oh yeah, there's some of our lovely cabbage. Yeah, absolutely. <sighs> Almost ready. Way. Nice. There you go, perfect job, nice Holy fish. Holy smokes. Beautiful. My heart is bumping. I'm almost out of breath. That is such a nice fish. Excellent. What a what a fun fight. Oh man, that was a uh, that was an awesome fish fight. But I got to tell you, I am smoking hot now in this fleece. The sun's kind of come up behind the clouds, so. I layered up, I got a t-shirt on, I'm gonna take this off, slather on some sunscreen, wash off my hands so I don't mess up my fly line, and I'm gonna get another big northern bike. <laughs> fish. There you go, right on. Oh yeah, no, it's a nice fish. That's, yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I was, I was thinking. It's the high 30s, looks like anyway, or something like that. Oh, my drag is way too loose on this. Tighten it up. Okay. Let's see here. What we got. Right on, nice fish, yeah. Thank you. Excellent. We actually just uh, switched flies over from the black and red northern magic to a yellow and red clown. Um, and giving it a few casts and move back into this side of the little bay here and oh man this, this is fighting like a very nice fish i knew right away i didn't really i didn't see it and it wasn't a super hard take but there was zero head shakes zero mm -hmm. head shakes and that was I find that's often a very good indicator. Okay. There you go. Take me for a little ride here. Wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love it. That is so awesome. Yeah, nice, beautiful, healthy fish. Nice, nice, nice. It's always so fun when you get to see them jump out of the water Absolutely. like that when they're this size. Oh, and that's a nice thick one too. Nice big healthy guy, eh? Let's see here. Bring her in head first and wow. Nice. <sighs> yes. <laughs> oh man, that is a nice fat fish too. Yo, right on. Good fish, Jenna. Thank you. Very Thanks nice. so much for your help. This is this is so awesome. They're beautiful fish. Yeah, absolutely. This one's very really fat too. Look yeah, it's how nice. How wide healthy. it is even through the shoulders. Yeah, absolutely nice healthy fish, hey? Nice. Beauty. Thanks, Trevor. Oh, for sure. Right on. We'll get it back.
Well, Camp Grayling, of course, is Black Lake, is the main lake we have, and it's a big lake. Uh, it's quite large. Uh, it's got to be 40 miles long uh, by probably 15 miles wide. Two major rivers flowing in, the uh, Fond du Lac River and the Cree River. And they meet in Black Lake, and then they flow out of Black Lake as the Fond du Lac River into Lake Athabasca. With Camp Grayling, we also have a number of outpost camps. Our main one is Rio Lake, and it's kind of a deluxe outpost camp. We have uh, a number of, uh, I guess, glamping with uh, the wall tents set up on platforms and that, and then uh, and a cabin and uh, various, I guess, other facilities there, a kitchen, an outdoor kitchen, really kind of a, a nice setup. Um, the main species that we fish for are pike and uh, walleye, lake trout. It has a great trout population, a very strong trout population in the spring. You see them everywhere. I wasn't the only one finding success on the water that day. After having so much success in the first location on the lake, we headed to another of Trevor's favorite spots for the afternoon bite. This spot, JB. I really like this spot. It's like a real nice drop off here, right on the edge of the weed line. Look how thick it is there, and then right here it's just probably five or six feet deep here. This has all the signs of a 50. They're gonna be anywhere in the lake, it's gonna be exactly in a spot like this. Just cruising the edge of that weed line there. I'm not making long casts, I'm just trying to be accurate. I'm trying to spread it spread it around right into the holes where I could get a nice little lane to run it through the weeds. Oh, there's one. <laughs> He's right in a salad. Right in a salad. Okay, you ready, JB? I'm yeah. gonna try to get him back to you there. Okay, I can, I can get around there. There you go. Put her back, JB. Yeah. Go get your granny. <laughs> With such a great first day of fishing at the Real Lake Outpost under our belt, Mikey and I could hardly wait to see what fish we'd catch tomorrow. It's our last morning here on Rio Lake before we head back to the main lodge. And Mikey and I are going to have one last crack at the lake, trying to pull out one of these massive, massive northern pikes. We know they're here, we haven't gotten into them yet, but even if we don't this morning, I know we'll have another chance at great northern action when we get back to the main lodge. So let's head out, see what we can find. We're gonna hit a walk off home run. Uh, yesterday we were marking the fish. Some of them are sitting right up on top, some of them sitting in the middle, some of them right down below. Anywhere in the column at around 12 feet. So they could be sitting anywhere. So Jen is working a little deeper. She's using that sink tip and letting it get down and I'm trying to cruise through the middle column. There you go. 
You know, I tell you, these little ones, it takes a couple seconds to find out how big they are. They hit so hard. Thank you, sir. Lunge. That's a nicer, little, that's a nicer size one. This is pretty much an average fish up here. You, some people come up here and take these all day long. This is food to some of the fish up here. We're looking for the ones that want this for lunch. That looked like it hit hard, Jenna. It did hit hard. And I'm not really feeling many head shakes here, so feeling like that might be a good sign. This could be a, a better fish. It's hard to tell because they all fight so well, but. Yeah, especially with all the weeds down there too. They get down in there and it yeah. adds weight to them. And... A good indicator though, he's going deep. He's going deep, um, fighting me. And I'm not really not feeling any head shakes. Okay. You tighten my drag a little bit, I think. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's definitely ooh, a bigger fish oh, yeah. than we've seen so far this morning. This is what we're out um, here for. We've been working this point and there's um, a variety of depths. There's a few drop-offs, a few uh, um, kind of rocky, shallower, er shallow areas and then uh, dispersed patches of weeds. That's, That's a beauty. Oh, oh no. Put my rod tip. Your rod tip won't bend. You Good won't job, lose it under the bow. I might I tend to touch job. too much, keeping tight to that. And I had almost no trouble getting this guy on the reel. He took my line and got it. Yes. Oh, yes. Woo. <sighs> Woo. <laughs> All that hard work oh paid off. Oh, my God. That's awesome, Jenna. Man, that is a fat fish. Holy cow. Oh, man, my heart's pumping. <sighs> Okay. Awesome. Awesome fish. This is this is epic. So I just landed that massive, probably around 40, 39, 40 inch northern. And it wasn't long after I switched my fly. We'd kind of been casting this area all morning. Um, we realized they were down a little bit deeper, so we'd switch to heavier flies, a few different colors, and uh, Mikey was having a little more success than I was, so I kind of sat down and took a peek through my fly box, and I found this fly that had a heavier head and a bigger profile. And this is actually called the Green Lantern. It's a pattern and a fly uh, created and sent to my dad, actually, by um, someone named Mike Nuo. And Second cast, bang, I got a fish. Fourth cast, bang, I got a fish. And then I got into that massive, awesome northern. So sometimes if, you, if you're catching the small ones, you're not really hooking into anything, looking through your fly box and sizing up, sizing down, changing the weight of your fly to explore different areas of the water column, that can really be the key to getting into the fish. There is nothing like a fresh fish dinner surrounded by new friends to end another excellent day out on the water. It's day three of our Northern Saskatchewan adventure. And after a morning of travel from the outpost, we're back in Stony Rapids at the Camp Grayling home base. One of my favorite things about Northern Saskatchewan is the versatility of the fishing. And today, we're angling for one of my favorite species, Arctic Grayling. For the afternoon, Mikey and I rigged up our lighter rods and Trevor and JB took us all to a nearby hotspot. So it's a new day at, at Camp Grayling. 
Trevor has something a little special in store. Um, today, we're still on our quest for the massive pike. We're over at Black Lake, probably about a short 10 to 15 minute jaunt from the camp. And before we go hunting the big pike, he's taking me to a very, very special place. We're at Camp Grayling. That means we have to at least try to poke for some grayling today. It's a bucket list for me. I got my five weight and I'm gonna try to get my first one on a dry. So Mike, I'm gonna get you to come back here. And basically what we're gonna work is you can see where the where you got the run going on, right? Get it out into that kind of where it's it's bubbling but not too currenty, and just let it run, work its way over to here. Once you get there, you can you know you can do a little bit of twitching, but typically what you're gonna to want to do is you're gonna let it naturally float. You don't wanna move it too much until you get over to here and then start twitching it. But even when you get up the edge of that pool, that rock and that, you can hold it there and it could just sit there. Because they'll come out from that pool behind that rock and grab it, right? And then if not, bring it back, but never never pull out, right, and, and cast. Always twitch it all the way back, because all the way along this edge, like you'll see as we're standing here, once things calm down, you'll see them start swimming around and you'll see they'll be surfacing all over out here, right? So we'll start with that and we'll go from there and you got a good fly on, so come get one, buddy. Control it, we're cons so controlling the slack. That little strip set, right? There, you've yeah. seen that big one surface way out there, right? Come on, baby. So we're just gonna swing that through? Yeah, let it swing through. And then you're gonna slowly, yeah, there it yeah. is. There it is. First, First cast, Trevor called it. Perfect. My heart is racing right now. Right on, I buddy. can't believe it, Trevor. It looks like a good one too. You literally called it. First <laughs> cast, he says. Perfect. On a dry, we're throwing a humpy. Yeah. Northern Saskatchewan, Camp Grayling. I'm literally living out a dream right now. Excellent, I'm a kid man. in a candy store. Camera. Excellent, excellent. Oh, right I can't on. wait so to I'm see one of these. Around. I'm just gonna get this, and then the they I fight change. very, very similar to whitefish. Yeah, very, yeah. When they really similar. use yeah. that big fin to their advantage to get the leverage, hey. Oh my God, is this incredible? Come on, look at the red, hey. On a dry colors. Okay, ready? Yeah. Well, oh, he he probably. Oh, to it's a in, hog man? too, it's man. It's a big one. Oh yeah, it's a beauty. I might go to my bigger net here, dude. Okay, bringing her home. First grayling there you go. in oh. the net. Oh, it's a hog too. On a humpy, my first grayling on a dry. I am beyond excited. I'm losing my mind right now. This Excellent. is so cool. And this is, a, this is a beautiful grayling. Nice, big, healthy, gorgeous, healthy grayling. 20 inch Arctic grayling on a dry. Excellent. Absolutely incredible. While Mikey was having a blast from the boat, I couldn't get my fly into the drift from where I stood on shore. Thankfully, like a true friend, Mikey suggested we switch spots and share in the fun. And let it, you wanna let it float as naturally as possible. And then when you get up to here, you can just stop and let it hold there and it'll okay. sit there. And a lot of times they'll come up and get it. And then you can strip it back. And I would suggest, you know, stripping it back uh, part way up at least once you get it to that rock and you just hold it just strip it a little bit because they, they take it a lot along this edge too as okay. well right? right yep in order to get a good drift i used a reach cast to present the fly to the grayling which worked perfectly there you go perfect Ah, right on, okay. <laughs> Good stuff.
There we go. Nice. That was right oof, above the back eddy there. It's exactly where uh, Mikey told me he was having lots of success as well. Get this guy in here. So just beautiful fish. Oh, there he goes. Long distance release. I mean, these these fish are just so awesome. It doesn't even matter when I get them in the boat. Seeing them rise to your dry fly is just, man, it's exceptional. Nice. I wasn't even sure at first if that was a, a fish or not. I just put out a little bit more line and it was right past the fast water. So I was concerned at first my, my line had got sucked in, but there you have it. Oh man. Wow. That, that looks like a nice one. All right. Good job. Thank you. Oh, that is a nice one. That's a really nice one. I'm going to put them in a bigger net here this time. This is a beautiful healthy gray wing. Awesome, thank you. That's a big one. That's a big one. There's nothing like the thrill of catching such an incredible bucket list fish to round out a perfect afternoon on the water. Okay, Mike, so we're gonna start out today. We're at, this is a beautiful spot, right? I love seeing spots like this. We got the waves coming in, current coming out, beautiful river flowing into the water, some white water up in there. We're gonna cover this whole area. It's a big flat. We're out in about seven, eight feet. We've got a little bit of cabbage weed, some rock bottom. We've got a point on one side and a pocket on the other. We're just gonna start out here, work our way in. We'll just fan cast, cover it, try and keep, right? Make sure you're watching behind your hook, looking for followers coming in. And we're just going to work our way in. We'll just keep on peppering that. We'll spend a fair bit of time here. This is a pretty key spot for us, okay? There's a fish. Nice. Casting right into shore, just like you said. Not a big fish, but they sure hit hard. Perfect. And I think Trevor's starting to dial us in big time. I see the old uh, wheels turning on you, Trevor. Every, yeah. every time we go over a pass, you're showing uh, a new sign of future spots. Absolutely, yeah. I'm excited. It's nice to be going, taking a tour around the lake here with a very experienced, highly experienced guide like JB's been guiding on the lake for 45 years. Yeah, it's you know, unreal. 45 years, Mike, that's unbelievable, yeah. eh? Yeah, he's Absolutely. a human, human so, GPS. Oh yeah, well being able to have access to that kind of a knowledge base is unbelievable. That's for darn sure. Fighting, right? Multiple guides have been guiding out here, you know, Cap Cranley guides have been here their whole lives. And their dad guided here before that. That's right, you know? yeah, he was telling the, the sharing of knowledge is crazy. Nice, healthy, big shoulders. Yeah, you know you're in a, a great fishery when these are time killers. Absolutely, yeah. Nothing wrong with that guy at all. You know, nice, healthy, beautiful fat fish, too. Nice. Right on that edge. Perfect, Mike. With a little guidance from Trevor, it wasn't long before Mikey really got into the fish.
There's one. Okay, good. There's a fish. Right where you said it would be, Trevor. Right on, right on that drop, baby. Yeah, right nice. off that drop. Excellent. There's a fish. After another epic day on the water, there's nothing like a hot meal. While targeting northern pike, we used primarily 9 and 10 weight rods and came prepared with floating, sink tip, and full sinking line matched with large arbor reels. The flies that we found the most successful were Northern Magic, the Clown, the Green Lantern, and the optic minnow. And of course, when fishing for Arctic grayling, we used both four and five weight rods with sink tip or floating line. Flies included fat alberts and humpies. For our final day of fishing, Trevor and JB took us out on the lake to search for monster northern pike. You know, uh, Jenna, some of the recommendations I give my clients often, especially fly fisher people, is that, uh, you know, get, I'll try and get your cast out as far as you can every time. And if I notice somebody's hitting the end of their line, then I'll tell them, you know, feed out another five feet or so, because it's very imperative, especially with northern pike, and especially when we're trophy pike fishing, you want to cover as much water as possible, right? So getting an extra five feet every cast, all of a sudden, every five or 10 feet every cast, at the end of the day, you cast an extra 1,000 or 1,500 feet, right. which really makes a big difference, right? Because it's all about covering water and as far from the boat as possible, because they do often, they'll follow along, right? Okay, that's a great tip. I will pull out a little bit more line and try to cast a little further this time. Awesome, excellent. Yeah, give it a try. Hopefully it works. Whoa, that's a fish. Perfect. Okay. All right, Jenna. Nice. Okay, so. From working this weed bed, we finally localized it here on the point. This is feeling like a nice fish. Okay. And uh, initially, I'd been using a pretty slow retrieve because it, uh, oh, nice one. Nice one. Because the water temperatures are a little warm. I think uh, Trevor had said it was, what, 70? 70, 74. 74. So, yeah. um, pike are normally more active when it's a little cooler than that. So I was using a slower retrieve, um, but I wasn't getting, getting any hits. So I sped it up just a touch and that's what it took. I lost one and then oh, I was able to set the hook on this guy. What a good fighter, holy smokes. Beautiful, healthy, girthy oh, fish, nice. right? Nice. Nice. Rough neighborhood. Yeah, absolutely it is. Ouch. Beauty, nice fish. Thanks, Trevor. Let's pop this guy over here. And you can see when they're hungry or when the water's warmer like that too, they take the fly, totally engulf it, right? It's not on the edge of the lip. She's all the way down. So that uh, tells you that definitely keep going with that faster retrieve. 
Excellent. Well, there we go. I had literally just landed on the water. I just tightened up my line there. And uh, right exactly where Trevor said that fish was going to be. <laughs> Perfect. And what, what is that weed called again, Trevor? That's, I'm not familiar. Yeah, that's Richardson pond weed. It's red. It, it's just a few Ooh. red leaves that came up. And often, and it's usually in real shallow water. On some lakes, it doesn't hold fish. and other lakes, it holds a lot of fish. Okay. I found over the years. So typically, I have a hard time driving by it without fishing it just because of that, right? Oh, this is an aggressive fish. Mm -hmm, perfect. Nice. Quite long as well. There we see. Yeah, nice fish. All right, perfect right in the corner of the mouth. And Sweet. Thanks, Trevor. Yeah, right on. Pop that hook out. Pop the hook out and then open his mouth to avoid him stealing all your hair off Thank your you. fly. Beautiful, healthy pike. Oh, that's a nice a healthy bite. fish, nice. Yeah, nice. That's a nice fish. Yeah, darn right. Okay, that's a very good fish. Nice. Thank you. Definitely a nicer fish. It is. He doesn't want to let go of the fly. Come on, buddy. Let it go. There we go. Very nice. Nice, real healthy, nice, beautiful northern. Good thick back. Beautiful. What an incredible way to end our northern Saskatchewan adventure. If you'd like to learn more about Camp Grayling or our show, visit us on the web at www.thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Tourism Saskatchewan, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada.